The Grizzlies have been an elite defense in the NBA, and it comes from the tone set by Taylor Jenkins that this team is going to play hard. No matter what lineups he's rolling with, no matter who's in the rotation any given night, they really buy into being one of the best defenses. They're top five in blocks, they're top five in steals, and when you look up and down at all the things this team does when it comes to opponents, effective field goal percentage, opponents' points in the paint, there's so many different points of emphasis that the Grizzlies do so well. The Grizzlies' success defensively this year is partly because of the system they have in place and, and knowing what they're going to do every single night. They know their rotations, they know how to play in those passing lanes and how to funnel guys toward the middle. But it does take the whole team mentality and creating that chaos on the defensive end, getting those opportunities in transition, points off of turnovers, that's something that has been this team's calling card for a few seasons now and that continues this year. And the defense starts with Jaron Jackson Jr. and Dylan Brooks. I mean, they wreck havoc. They make it extremely difficult for any offense. Don't care who you are. You know, we got two of the best defenders in the league, and it's a it's a luxury to have for sure. When you got two guys like that on the floor, you're obviously going to have a good defensive team, and the rest of us are, you know, smart guys that buy the team principles, so so it works. It's a, it's a great dynamic to have. It's a, something that, you know, motivates the rest of the team as well uh, to pick up the defensive intensity. They set the tone each and every night for us. If people have to worry about him a lot, can kind of forget about me coming you know, on the backside to help at the last second, especially with my timing. I'm going to be able to find a lot more ways to just help. It's not a straight line drive. You're not getting past you easily. So if you just so happen to, you worked really hard to do that, and I'm there. You forgot that the Block Panther was in the building. Favorite Jaron Block. I mean, it feels like I think he has like a thousand on the year or something crazy. The one on Embiid was good. Embiid. Drives. Oh, what a block by Jerry! Holy cow, the defensive gem of the year! Oh, the block pepper! That's the block pepper! They call it the block pepper yeah. trade option! I mean, JJ is invaluable to what we do. I mean, you can see his impact night in and night out. Obviously, a guy that's in the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, I'm impressed every single game. I mean, he's he's brutal. Jaron Jackson Jr. is blocking everything in sight. It's rejected by Jackson. Oh, what a block! Jaron Jackson Jr. goes from being a first team all defender last season to this year being, in my opinion, the obvious choice for defensive player of the year. And Jaron Jackson Jr. has bought in to him being the biggest, baddest player on the court night in and night out. He can guard out on the perimeter if he has to. He can play in the paint. He can switch with anybody. He, he, he's such an impressive player to me defensively. That development is really one of the reasons this Grizzly team has won 50 games. I think uh, probably last year I was just going for a lot more just blocks, swiping a lot. I was getting blocks, but the rate just looked like I was I was doing it the wrong way. I felt like, uh, and, and I still got a ton. Um, and I think this year I, I, I was able to get a lot more, a lot better ones, keeping the ball in play, uh, because I wasn't really focusing on it. I was just focusing on changing their shot, forcing them to miss, because that's the whole point. But if you get a block, it's a bonus. Jaron Jackson Jr. is the defensive player of the year. There's no way you look at the numbers and you can't seriously think that Jaron Jackson Jr. isn't a leading contender, if not the defensive player of the year. Jaron Jackson Jr. is like the ultimate scary movie. You hear the music, you know the fear is coming, something is lurking there. He's just got an amazing mindset in terms of like, he's going to try and block every single shot. And even if the dude like dunks it, you know what I mean? Like, it's still impressive because 99% of players wouldn't even try that. Because the dude has two steps, open dunk. He's still going. And that's like a different, that's a completely different men mentality. That's the most impressive thing, you know what I mean? Even if it looks cool, the fans love it. Oh, you got dunked on? It's like, bro, like, as an athlete, like, you know, basketball player, it's like, bro, that's high level. It's, it's great to have a safety net like that back there. Uh, he's one, I think he's Defensive Player of the Year this year. His presence is everything. I mean, we have confidence being able to press up on guys, you know, maybe be a little bit more aggressive on the perimeter, especially guys that we want to play inside the three-point line. It's like, try to go down there. He's got everyone's back. He sees things as it's unfolding in the possession. That's why his timing's so great when it's coming over being a weak side defender and rotating and blocking shots. Maybe not blocking shots all the time, it's altering shots or discouraging a team from what we call our priorities, taking away the rim and the paint. High right, high right, high right. Good, pin, pin, pin. Come on, come on, here it comes. Good, right out, good. 
He understands the impact he has in winning. It's let me be a leader on the defensive side. It's communication, it's activity. Uh, he puts the work in every single day. Uh, he understands that's his leadership opportunity is to be that tone setter on the defensive side of the floor, play with that spirit, play with that energy, play with his voice out there. Um, it's awesome to watch. He's the anchor to our defense, um, him and DB. DB, I always say he's the ultimate competitor. With all the work that he's putting on his individual self and growth, he owes that to his teammates to help them see the example that he sets for preparing for opponents. When I signed up for, you know, guarding the best player every single night, they're going to stem from being tall, small, big, fast, quick, and it's just figuring out that's where the film comes in. How do I stay in front? Where, where do they like to go? I just want to, you know, be great at what I do, and for that is each team has got a different superstar, and how do I make them have a worse game than they had before. Whoever is the best player on the court any night, Dylan Brooks says bet. That's who I want to be on. Dylan Brooks ranks first in all NBA players in effective field goal percentage against all-stars. So when Dylan Brooks is matched up against an all-star in this league, he's making their life incredibly difficult. When you get to this level, everybody's so great at what they do. So you gotta know like tendencies, you gotta know what they like to get to when it's clutch time, knowing plays, plays that they like. So I'm always prepared, like two steps ahead. So when the play call gets called or he's in ISO mode, I have a game plan, like right there. Two seconds, a three, has blocked by Brooks. Hammer, nail, coffin, this baby is over. I said we needed one defensive play from Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks comes up with the defensive play of the night to win this basketball game. He knows the other team probably better than themselves. Uh, all the film he watches. Hand off here. Hand off here. He's legit. Like that, that guy's got everything down to a team. I mean, he knows all the plays, so he's really good. During games, like he'll talk to us, like, yo, do this. Hey, come, come, come. Yeah, yeah. Stay close to him. Close. Comes off. Uh, Get yeah, yeah. He's one of the best defenders in the league, one of the smartest players in the league. So uh, he's taught me a lot about the intricacies of the game. He helps me, he helps everybody. He's seen so much over his time. He's always going to like point out different things you can look for defensively. But it's really about giving you the keys so you can look at it yourself. DB is probably the most prepared player on our team each and every night. Knowing the ins and outs of personnel, you know, I think that's half the battle right there. And then the second half is just your will and you, you see him on the court every night laying his, his body on the line, giving 110%. You know, you're not gonna find a guy that's more consistent with their effort than, than Dylan Brooks. Defense, they say is how much tenacity or how much like passion you have for the game, where like it's just purely just hard work. You see how hard he plays because it's how hard he works. That's how he's built. That's authentic to who he is. We always talk about we want to be the most competitive together team. We want to have some swag and spirit behind all that. Uh, he epitomizes that. The desire that these guys have to score the basketball, to take over games, to win games, you have to have the same desire on the defensive end to guard them, to frustrate them to be in all in their shit. If you don't have that same desire, you already lost the battle. Because those guys work every single day to make shots, to figure out how to score on different defenses. So, you know, I create that desire, I create that motivation. So I have that edge, that, that motivation to win games. Memphis has one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. Their defense is anchored by someone that by the end of the year could be defensive player of the year. We all know their mentality out in Memphis. They're a team that takes an immense amount of pride in the defense that they play night in and night out. That's the hardest thing in the league to do is to play defense. It's not glorified. It's not a, a cute thing to do. God, people don't like that. That's what type of edge, that's what type of culture we create over here. 